restrictions on the purchasing of this right here, used catalytic converters, but mechanics here at Blackwell Automotive said they're still having to replace this part constantly. I, but expensive to replace. In 2021, Chattanooga police reported five times more stolen catalytic converters than last year. A new law went into effect in July to try to reduce these thefts, but this mechanic from Blackwell Automotive said it still happens constantly. We see stolen catalytic converters on a daily basis. Mainly because it's so easy to do. 45 seconds to a minute and it's gone. But what makes this car part so valuable? John Berger owns a scrap metal business, and he says it's the metals inside them. They have platinum, palladium, and rhodium, which is all precious metal. And they go for a lot of money. And there's seven, eight hundred dollars for the converters right there, and that's be, and that's even with the value of them has gone way down. But they're even more expensive to replace brand new. Jeff Stinnett said he recently got one stolen off his work truck. I had heard that that, that was something that had been going on in this area that was pretty prevalent. And so um, as soon as I started the truck, I knew exactly what had happened. He said it made an extremely loud noise and his was $600 to replace. The Chattanooga police did say that since the law was passed in July, the thefts went from 54 in July to 33 stolen converters in September. Now, mechanic Michael DeLuca said if someone were to steal this converter right here, they could sell it for around $250 to $300. But for the vehicle's owner to replace it brand new, it could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $1,200. Let's take a live look inside the courtroom this afternoon where a recess just began. Just a few minutes ago, Janet Hines officially waived her right to testify, which means she will not take the stand to tell her side of what happened. Just in the last few minutes, the defense started zeroing in on the flooded manhole. This is what Officer Nicholas Gallinger was checking when he was hit and killed. Today's witness, Christopher Dahl, took this photo of the manhole right before the crash. He claims it's been a problem for a long time, and he's complained about it to the city before the accident. I thought that that sign being down like that and the barrier being in the middle of the road was going to cause an accident further, you know, later on in that evening. And there's also a wrongful death lawsuit filed by Nicholas Gallagher's family claiming negligence by the city contributed to his death. Another defense witness testified that Janet Hines did not seem impaired before driving home after hours at a Ringgold bar. It, had there been any tail signs we would not have, I mean, we'd have taken her keys. We'd sure. have take, I would have taken her purse. Or she Period. had said something to you. Yes. If she had said, hey, I've had a little too much drink and I've arrived home. Absolutely. It's a controversial process that happens once a decade, redistricting. Now, redrawing, re, redrawing district lines sets the political foundation for the next 10 years, and it affects how schools are funded, how your roads are paved, and how your community gets what's needed most. Now, Tennessee lawmakers want to be more transparent after failing to do that 10 years ago. Never has the opportunity been so great for so few to do so much for so many. In the recent 2020 census report, Hamilton County's population grew 8.8% from the last census in 2010. And with each of the nine districts with only one county commissioner representing nearly 40,000 people, now there could be a new district added. Um, it's true that in our state, only a few insiders have a meaningful chance to get involved with drawing the district lines. Um, decisions have often been made in secret with little opportunity for the public to have input on the district lines or community that they end up representing. Tennessee received an F grade for openness of its last redistricting process. Although transparency is not legally required in the state, some lawmakers want that to change. The goal is we want an open process and we want to have fair maps. As for some residents like Tommy Davidson from Ottawa, his concerns are more residential developments bringing more traffic in his neighborhood. Well, but with the enormous growth over Cambridge Square and this area marketing with hotels and restaurants, it's good, but it's really busy. Uh, you just have to be a little more patient and uh, uh, we just have to get used to the combination of rush hour and the high school getting out at two, two o'clock. And that's just one way that this redistricting process could affect you. We're considered one of 
of the most gerrymandered counties in the state. So we have that opportunity to be part of a transformative move to change our state uh, in a more fair and equitable manner. Chattanoogans have already received a third dose of a Pfizer vaccine, and that could become even more common once the CDC makes their official recommendation. But in our area, people are already lining up to get a third dose of a different vaccine. Close to 350 people rolling up their sleeves in the name of science. And if that's what it takes to me rolling up my sleeve and providing the data through my blood work and such, I'm happy to do that. Sharon Moore and Samantha Kerpet participating in ClinSurge's third dose Moderna vaccine trial. The FDA looks at each individual product. Pfizer came first in line. Moderna's coming second. We anticipate that the J&J &J vaccine will be third in line as these companies present their data. Both Samantha and Sharon say it was an easy decision for them to participate this time around. The two participated in ClinSearch's Moderna clinical trial in the summer of 2020, before the vaccine was even authorized for emergency use. I'm more scared, more terrified of everything dealing with COVID and catching that than I am for whatever side effect I can have from a vaccine. The already known long term effects of COVID and the toll the virus had taken on our local community at that point, encouraging them to take the shot then. It's meant journaling weekly and regular visits to doctors for blood work and check ins ever since. At this point, they're trying to see how long the antibodies will continue being made in our bodies how strong they will continue to be so that way they can determine when everybody's going to need the booster shots. Dr. William Schaffner explaining that clinical trials like the one happening now at ClinSearch are the basis of modern medical practice. Those of us who are medical practitioners, we need to see the data in order to become convinced that this is a good thing for our patients. The data produced reviewed not only by doctors like Schaffner, but also by regulatory agencies like the FDA and CDC, as they eventually will make the call on the Moderna boosters. And ClinSearch tells us they hope to start giving out shots to those enrolled in their booster third dose Moderna trial as early as Friday.